Hi everybody, my name is Derek Kalin, and I wanted to talk a little bit today about The Witness. Uh, the Witness is a puzzle game, uh, and something that I find really interesting about it is the uh, elegance and simplicity of the tutorial. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit what I mean by that. Um, this is the opening section of the game. You just spawn in darkness in a long gray pipe, and really the only thing that you have to do is move forward. And about the only part of the GUI you will ever see is this prompt to uh, tap A and bring up a puzzle uh, screen. So this is the fundamental interaction uh, that the player will have with the witness. Um, immediately, without any words, our eyes are drawn to this bulbous end of the line over here. And we click. And then, through audio, we're directed to bring the line all the way over to the right, over here, and then tap A again. So that was the game introducing you to the fundamental aspect of The Witness. This is the fundamental puzzle that the player will interact with, and from this point on, puzzles are just going to increase in complexity, but still retain this, this basic architecture. You have a line, you have a starting point, an end point, and you gotta get there. So uh, we're led into this room over here, and we don't really have an option except to uh, load up a second puzzle. And now we see a little bit more complexity, but the same basic principle. Start at one end, and move to another. Now we're entered into the wide open world of the witness, and we're allowed a little bit more freedom to explore. Again, what's interesting to me is that at no point are we provided with any text or any voiceover. Uh, simply, we're given no cho choice but to go forward and learn as we go how to play the game. And now we're released into this courtyard with a little bit more flexibility, but still uh, we're clearly limited. They draw our attention over to this um, this door thing over here, and we're presented with what appears to be uh, a, another puzzle. We're given an entry point, but like, we can't move forward. And it's very clear that in order to move forward, we need to address these three locks. So, I'll follow the cable over to the puzzle. And this is the first puzzle that we are presented with uh, as we exit that door. We walk over and now we see something that looks a little bit more complicated. There's bends and twists and, and all sorts of weird dead ends. This is to teach us uh, a couple of more principles about the game. One of them is that you can't loop over yourself. So if we try to like go around this curve, I'm physically stopped from advancing any further, right? So the game is telling us, all right, here's another rule. Uh, you can't loop around on yourself. Also, not every, not all exits are created equal. Uh, I can go to these other endpoints, but they're flat, and really, uh, nothing happens if I try to finish. Right? If I do, let me, let me show you what happens if I do try to finish. I get this, like, very clear deflating noise, and like the light goes dim, and we're still on the puzzle screen. Like every visual indication says, "Nah, you got this wrong. Try again." And so, we're presented with. A little bit more windy a path, but still something that fundamentally, you know, uh, adheres to the same basic rules that we have learned from the other two previous puzzles. All right, so that's something new. We get a new sound effect uh, with like a humming sound. All of a sudden this cable is lit up and we're prompted to follow it. And we're presented with another puzzle. This one's a little bit more complex even, where you're like, might go wrong in a few directions, kind of fool our way around, but still, the same basic puzzle that we've encountered all this time. All right, let's try one last one over here. Now check this out, this is even more complex, but still fundamentally the same puzzle structure. Whoop, so I messed that up. So now, 
this is, I think, the first scenario where we're given branching pathways, right? So the player begins to become aware of the fact that the game's not going to make it easy for you all the time. Ah! Now, you might have heard that click sound. If we were to head back over here, ta-da! Check it out. We see the power cable extending all the way over to here, and it's very clearly unlocked the first stage of this puzzle. But we're still not out yet, so I'm going to keep moving forward. So, I, to me, this is really impressive. The fact that the game so far has taught us a few basic concepts and hasn't had to, um, you know, use any words to explain the, the way to solve these puzzles. It's just the only option, obviously, is to uh, do what has been done. <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. All right. Here, we have another uh, new rule that we're learning about. Oh, check it out. We have two possible starting points. That's never happened before. And if we were to try to solve this puzzle on this side, we'd completely fail because this, this half is completely bisected. So, in this very elegant, simple way, the player is taught that there could be multiple entrances to a puzzle. Boom, one more down, let's keep going. Side note, uh, one thing that I think is really interesting about The Witness is like the way that the environment does some storytelling. You know, this is not a very threatening environment. It's clearly a garden, there's beautiful, colorful plants, a uh, lot of green growing, and while it's, you know, clearly here to challenge us, it's not here to make us frightened for our own safety, and in fact, the environment seems to indicate that people just might sit here and enjoy the scenery. So we have these two chairs by a table and a flower, and chairs are facing outward, as if someone were just gazing upon the vista. And if we walked over here, we find a nice little divan area. Like, I would, I would be happy in this environment. This seems like an interesting place to be. But, all right, so we continue on. Now check this out. There are two exits. So, we might be tempted, when we first play this game, to screw up. Here we go. We might be tempted, in the first place, to just use the first exit that comes into our view. And we back up. Look over here. Huh. That thing does clearly leaves this little enclave area. And if we ran back and took a look at whoop, took a look at our, our exit gate, we can see that it's not <laughs> it's not open yet. So we're taught through this that uh, there are other ways like a puzzle can be solved in multiple fashions and still be correct. So we're, we're taught as the player, oh, okay, like, come to expect that even if you solve a puzzle, you might need to revisit it. What the heck am I doing? Eh, eh, <laughs> Bisect this one over here. And one final click in the distance tells us that we're almost done with our quest. Okay, so these are the opening sections to uh, The Witness. And I don't want to go on too much further because really this game is about the puzzles and puzzles are really no fun if you've been told how to beat them. I do want to remark that like The Witness does this particular thing a lot. It, it creates a door but then lets you like see through it or see beyond it. And that's a motivating force, I think, for the, for the game. Like... Exploration is your reward, in many cases, for solving these puzzles, and the doors are not constructed just simply to be barriers, but also to be, like, enticing uh, glimpses of what you can experience if you, if you do the work that the game sets for you. Okay. So, we just exited the, the main tutorial section of the game. 
And from here on out, the player is actually pretty free to roam about and view what's happening on the island. Um, starting from like whatever point really makes sense to them. And you can see from this view that there's actually an awful lot to explore. Um, weird great cloud over there. So before I, I conclude, there's, there's one thing I wanted to highlight over here. So this is the first puzzle that we see upon leaving the tutorial area. And at the start, we're, we, we think to ourselves, okay, well, there's nothing too new and different here. Like, we see multiple possible entrances, we see multiple possible exits, but very quickly we realize, oh gosh, there are, there are elements that we haven't encountered before. There's these black and white square pairings, there are these hexagons in the middle of, of the road. One really interesting thing about The Witness is all the puzzles are solvable um, they don't need an extra item in order to, to complete them. Like, if I were to play through the entire game and learn all the principles of The Witness, I could come back to this puzzle and beat it instantaneously. I don't need to run around and find a key or, or like, some sort of, um, you know, NPC character to open the door for me. What this means is that, um, you know... The Witness, you basically progress by gaining knowledge about puzzle mechanics, right? If, at some point, we will learn how the black and white squares interact with each other. Well, at some point, we'll learn what the value of these hexagons is. So, seeing this puzzle and knowing that we can't address it at the moment, but that we will be able to down the line, is The Witness's way of saying, hey, <laughs> it's okay to like fail at a puzzle, scratch your head, See if you can figure it out, but if you can't, move on and try something else. All right, so here's the last uh, section of the game that I wanted to highlight. And again, this is just, I think, an indication of how well the game teaches you how to play it with no words at all. So we're presented with a variation of our, of our basic line puzzle. You have a starting point and an ending point, but you also have this black and white um, square combination. And... You know, our, our natural tendency is to try to, like, bridge this gap. That's actually the right answer. If we were to, like, go around and be idiots um, and tap A, we'd be getting this warning sign like, hey, by the way, you, you haven't figured out what's necessary for us. And you get this sound and, you know, uh, this is the witness's say way of saying, hey, you haven't gotten this right, try again. And upon doing the function that the witness has, has given us, we're presented with the next puzzle. Now, we might not fundamentally get, um, as is the case, that the way that you interact with these two tiles, if you see a black and a white, is to bisect them. But uh, you might have an indication of that. You might have been presented with this concept. And now the game moves on to, like, uh, run that home. So we're presented with a variation on this puzzle, right? Like the starting point and the exit point are are moved around. And if we tried to like not bisect these two things, uh-oh, we're told that we're wrong. But practically one of the only other combinations we can do is to bisect. And we're rewarded with the correct answer. Now uh, we're presented with another variation. Instead of two boxes, we have three. And we have a, a black puzzle over, or a black tile over here. So maybe we're curious. Uh, do you need to bisect uh, black tiles? Well, doesn't seem like that's right. But if we like went through and did something that we know is correct, running through the black and white tile, and then like maybe ran through the black tile, hey. Okay, we've learned that it's all right to, to bisect this. Or if we wanted to, we could just leave it all alone. There, this is the way that the witness tells us that there's no fundamental rule for two black tiles, at least not yet. So, okay, we say to ourselves, well, you know, this is pretty simple. We'll just go the way through. So now the next rule is revealed. If there is a black and white tile combination on the board, it must be threaded, right? It's not enough just to do one. 
You have to do all possible threadings. And so on and so on. Like, uh, after completing this series of like little puzzles, we are pre we are pretty much equipped to handle black and white tiles wherever they show up in the game in the future, right? And if you'll remember, back that way, we encountered uh, a puzzle uh, that used black and white tiles. So like already, we're given a, a key to enter that secret door. So all right, I hope you enjoyed this. It was kind of probably now that I'm I'm saying out loud. Probably not the most gripping uh, video, just watching a, a guy talk about puzzles. But I have to say, this is really interesting to me. Like, how many puzzles have we played, uh, I can think of many, where, you know, the game has to break narrative to explain a concept to you. Uh, where, you know, instead of, a, like, God forbid, a character explaining out loud something very, like, gamey and breaking the the narrative of the world even even like having a gui pop up and having the game like tell you in a window hey by the way you need to tap a three times in order to, to clear this puzzle instead of that the witness very elegantly and very simply has the puzzles train us on how to beat them uh itself which i think is just so interesting and so impressive uh and something i'm going to take to heart in making uh, when I'm making my own games. So, thanks for watching. Hope this was engaging. And uh, play The Witness. It's awesome.